this guy come when my wife first divorced me. I met this guy called Alec Rick. Yeah. And I was doing this removal. A good Samaritan. Oh, I was really down at that time, you know. Mm. I just lost my family, my house, you know, and everything, you know. Yeah. And I told that, you know, this guy that I was doing removal with, I've only just met him, do you know what I mean? And he, you know, so I was telling him my problems. Yeah. And he said, you know, you know gave me his keys to his boat in Canary Wharf. Solve, solve one of your problems. Well, which was a really, really beautiful boat, do you know what I mean? I was very lucky. Yeah. Living there for a year and a quarter. It was a life, I'm just, I'm a just, lifesaver at the time, wasn't it? Yeah, but I'm just sort of giving you an example that you know you can sort of give out your problems to other people, and they can sort of save you. Yeah. But I think it, it was kind of like um, doing him a favour too, because I felt like he needed somebody on that boat looking after it. To upkeep the upkeep and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's quite an expensive boat, and yeah. the heating was amazing. System on it basically, mm. and he needed somebody, especially in the winter time, you know, because it's quite quite surprising, you know, how um, all the wood on the boat kind of like kind of the coldness, you know, you know, whatever of the fog of the water, how freezing it can actually get, you know what I mean? Mm. So, and you just needed somebody on there to switch the heat on, and and also make sure nobody stole it. Somebody living on there because it's such a beautiful boat. Um, it, it, I think it's probably the best boat in the marina itself. You know what I mean? Out of all the boats there, and I, I bet there was quite a lot of eyes on it on the outside. Do you know what I mean? And if they saw somebody living on it, they're not going to rob it. You know what I mean? With me, you know, because boats in marinas are quite easy to get get into, yeah. break into. Mm. A lot easier than houses. Yeah, houses are made of bricks. Do you know what I mean? And the, they've also They probably got a camera system the, down by the yeah for sure. In Canary Wharf yeah. There now. Yeah, okay. For sure. But when I was living there fifteen mm. years ago, there was no none of the cameras. I don't think mm. they got today. Mm. You know, I mean, look, this is all quite new te technology everywhere, isn't it? They're putting cameras everywhere now, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. Well, it's not new, is it? You know, but I would say that in every high street, there's cameras now for you. Mm. You know, big cameras looking down at everyone. Yeah. And they're quite high tech cameras, do you know what I mean? They, they turn around and everything, you know. And this is a, a, an advanced technology that's been changed in time, slowly in time. Mm. And I think, like, like, you know, each decade that goes by, we're getting modern. Yeah. Well, you know, every, you know, like 10 years' time, the world's going to be more modern. Mm. I don't know how, but it will. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I can remember a world when there was no, no mobile no computers, or no internet. I can remember that world, do you know what I mean? And it, it doesn't feel that long ago to me in a kind of way. So I kind of like seeing all these inventions come along. I mean, when I was a little boy, when I was about eight, I can remember black and white televisions. Yeah, yeah. And there was only two channels. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, BBC One and BBC Two, I think. You know, But originally there was only one, BBC. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and slowly there, all the other channels are crept in. Yeah. Time, you know, mm. as all this new technology has got around. Advanced, yeah. I mean, we're living in today's world where everyone can make their own channel, mm. like we can. Yeah. And that's the world we're living in. You know, it's like almost every human being, I know that not every human being, but almost hu every human being on this planet has got a mobile phone today. Correct, correct, yeah. yeah. Mm. If you're not, you're behind. Mm. <laughs> And it's quite smart technology, really, when you think you've got a smartphone in your phone, I'm sorry, in your pocket. And it's, it's kind of like having a library in your pocket, almost. You know, well, more than a library, if you ask me. Well, it's instant, ac instant access to any almost anything you want any to find. Question. Anything you want to find out or anything you want to know about. Yeah. You know, and that's a beautiful thing. It don't yeah. matter whether you're 14 years old, you know, like, 14-year-olds mm. have mobiles today, don't they? Yeah. And you can learn quite quickly what you don't know. Yeah. Which is kinda of, I feel like it kinda of like making the world a happier place in mm. way. Because if we're if we're all learning um I, I mean
mean, there's, you know, I mean, I watch YouTube all the time, yeah, and there's lots of Darren and Karen on there everywhere, you know, in the world we're living in today. But I feel like slowly in time, maybe in the next decade, there won't be so many Karens and Darrens. Are you with me? Mm. You know, because we're all kind of like, you know, I mean, even these Darren and Karens, yeah, they're probably watching Darrens and Karens, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if you sort of been learning it by it. Mm. You sort of, I mean, we're all living in the same world, you know, mm. and YouTube is there for everyone. And it's all got the same information there for everyone, you sort of mean. Yeah. And, um, just feel like if we, if we did sort of like, if children say like learn about philosophy and things and they're a bit better educated, I just feel we would live in a better world today. Yeah, yeah, our society would only get better and advance and there'll be less division, less, um, you know. Do you think like the world is getting better in time? Or I think it is. I think this younger, just... I think this younger generation more so than ever before. Is understanding that we are we are all human beings. I think we live in the world in which we live in today. Almost most countries are almost completely multicultural today. Not all countries, but a lot of countries. There's a lot of diversity, a lot of different um, society, you know, different cultures and different you know religions and different lots of different you know um, ethnicities and stuff. You know. Um, and I think that's great, you know, a lot of people understand, a lot of people, because before, when countries used to be less um, multicultural and stuff, people didn't, and because people didn't, people weren't used to other races and things like that, so when other races first came around, they were unsure, because they would never, you know, if, you're, if you've never, okay, let's say you live in a country and you've never encountered a certain particular group of people, you see that, but if you've grown up all your life and you never, let's say you, okay, let's say you grew up in a country where you've never seen um, a white person, say for example, and you spent your whole life, almost, let's say you get to like 60, 70 years old, you've never seen a white person in your whole life, and all of a sudden you see a white person, randomly. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be intriguing, it's that intriguing, that unknowing factor, if you see what I mean. Um, so, I think that's so great today that a lot of the younger people understand that we can all be friends, we can all, we can all live together, we can all um, have fun together, we can all, um, you, you know, party together, etc. We can all, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, where you, where you come from, you know, your background, you know, etc. We're all, the, the common denominator is that we're all human beings. Um, and I think because of that, because the, I think a lot of the younger people understand understand this, I think that is what is, is helping us to advance more today in terms of there being less division, if you see what I mean, you know. Um, I think that a lot of the younger people are, everyone's friends with each other, you know, and they're all, they're all you know, happy to get to know each other's um, religions and cultural traditions and all this kind of thing, and they're very, a lot of younger people are quite respectful and you know that you know it's, it's we live in a different culture to different society today and i think that's i think it's a good thing well some people are racist yeah some people aren't you know, I mean, but i think that doesn't exist i think these concepts these 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 ideas of hatred and these ideologies based upon hatred and division are slowly decreasing and slowly being eliminated I think that mindset is within 50 years, hopefully 50 years, 100 years, that mindset would have died out and everyone would just be, everyone would just be together, you know, um, there's no need for division, you know, the government and the powers that be try to keep the people divided enough as it is, you know, with all the different things that they implement, you know, um, so we don't need to be, you know, fighting each other as well. We're already trying to fight the system, trying to survive, trying to, you know, try to, you know, stay one step ahead, you know. There's no need to be fighting, fighting. I think anything, this, you know? this timetable here, people written thousands of years ago, mm. and I don't think anyone can change it today, if you sort of mean. Yeah. That's what I think, anyway. Mm. Well, our time, our, our time, time essentially, the construct of time is just based upon the sun, the movements of the sun and the moon, essentially. Um, Mums are divided up by the moon pattern, isn't it? Yeah, and, and not only that, but to do with the zodiacs as well. 
they realise that, that you know the sun spends a certain amount of time in each zodiac, in each zodiac, um, you know. Um, so yeah, they realised a certain amount of days in each one, and they calculated it so they understood how many days were in a year. Mm. If you see what I mean. Well, so um, if you stand at the pyramids, right? yeah, right. Mm. and November time, right? Say in October time, you'll see the scales over. And that scales is Libra, I'm a Libra, mm, okay. Mm, yeah. And then when it comes to November month, mm. the the um the next one I can't remember. What, I, I think it's the Scorpions. Yeah, oh, the Scorpio. Yeah. 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 Where I come in, mm. the stars come in, okay, and it mm. takes a month for those stars yeah. to disappear before the next sign comes in. But that's what I'm saying. That's how so, was, these Egyptians, long thousands of years ago, looked at these stars. And they understood these things. Well, they saw this coming up year yeah. after year, and they wrote this down. Yeah. And that's how I think it come to be. You know what I mean? I don't know, you know, but that's... Well, the, yeah, they, they basically, over time, through observation, they understood that they, they basically would observe the sun year in, year out, mm -hmm. and observe the different transitions and where the sun... How the sun would move throughout the year around the, around the Earth, if you see what I mean, um, how, and how many days, like I said, how many days it would spend in each transition. So it would go to one, it would go to one sign of the zodiac, if you see what I mean. So one point in the sky, yeah, you know, a particular de de degree or angle, or whatever, and then it, and then after a certain amount of days, it would transition to another point, if you see what I mean, a different, uh, what another different point in the zodiac, as they would say. Um, yeah, and then it would continue, and then it would get to a certain point, and it it would restart. If you see what I mean, it would start again. I mean, I think like um, Stone Age, like Stone Age, Stone Age, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is, I think it's a bit older than the pyramids. Okay. okay. Mm. You know, so I think, well, you know, I'm not. Well, I was gonna say I the think whole. It's four thousand years old. The, the whole Stonehenge thing was a, dru a druidic thing, wasn't it? To do with the druids, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe. It's possible, yeah. Yeah. Because um, don't forget, prior to Christianity and and um, all these different religions and stuff we've got today. Um, got to remember that like England and certain other countries and stuff like especially like Scandinavia and lots of different places their cultural traditions and like religion so to speak or if you want to call it a religion um, their belief system or whatever else was more like Celtic if you see what I mean so they were so you had Celts you had Druids you had pagans you had um, all sorts of different if you see what I mean um, so yeah I think, like, for instance, Stonehenge, I mean, it's not really far from here, actually. I could get there tomorrow if I wanted to, do you know what I mean? Mm. It'd take me a few hours to get there. But anyway, yeah. I think that's the, one of the first clocks yeah. where they, I mean, every, I can't remember what day of the year it is. It's probably sort of on Christmas Day. The sun will appear exactly, you know, on yeah. the rock there, do you know what I mean? Or something mm. like that. It's all, it's all carved down down by the way the sun being you know, yeah, correct. Thing. It's like a giant clock. Correct. Of some. It is probably how they worked out the the months itself, I don't know, do you know what I mean? I'm not certain about that. But yeah. Stonehenge was the, I think mm. probably one of the first clocks mm. that was created on Earth, if you know what I mean. It's a very old um you know, I, I think it's older than the pyramids itself, okay. you know what I mean, you know. But the pyramids are phenomenal. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. But I think Stonehenge is probably four or five thousand years old. Yeah. So you're going back, back in time. And that's how, that's how we get the months as well. That's how you get the twelve months, as well. Twelve months of the year. Yeah. Because you've got twelve signs of the zodiac. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the sun transitions through each throughout each one. So that's where the twelve months come from. Yeah. As well, because we're talking about time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So the average day as well, I think before was three hundred and sixty-four days. Mm. It was they they estimated that it was three hundred and sixty-four days in every year. You know, obviously today we've got three sixty-five, and then some years like this year coming up, it'll be three sixty-six because it's a leap year. You know. I was born in nineteen sixty-five. Yeah. Oh. Means I'm. Two thousand twenty-five next year, mm. so that means I'm sixty. Mm. I think, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, sometimes I don't like it. Time, yeah. you know, mm. or some, 
sometimes, I mean, it's, it's kind of invented when you think about it. I mean, like pigeons or birds or nothing, they don't have time. They don't look at clocks. You know, they just see the sun come up, they wake up, they, they go and get something to eat, they have their breakfast, you know what I mean? There, there's no time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, so, well, well um, time is only in, but, you know. Um, it's relative to us. Well, they, you know, they learn how to measure time. Yeah. This is where they've done it. And um, humans have got to learn how to. I mean, I can remember being at school and learning how to know the time. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah. One o'clock, quarter past one, you know. Yeah. It takes a long time to learn, actually. Yeah. If you start, I mean, it's like your times table, you know, that takes time to learn. Yeah. So does time itself, actually. You know, you don't realise it. But it's kind of like being pumped into you as a little child, you know what I mean? You know, like we were talking about in celebration a few weeks ago, you know, where we have a Christmas holiday. This Easter holiday, and then we have the summer holiday, and then it comes round again, you know, <laughs> and it just goes round in circles for eternity, like that. My children will have to have it, you know, go by that, and their children will have to go by that timetable, if you see what I mean. Mm. They kind of like everyone, everyone's writing down dates every day, aren't they? You know, mm. the, cha- the, the, the time's always changing every day. Mm. Anyway, it's like now we've just, be, we've just begun a new year not long ago. Well, I feel like like even when you're born, okay, um, you get a midwife come around, you know, and they're weighing you. Yeah. Yeah, they want to know. I, don't, I know that I weighed um, two pounds when I was born, yeah. My brother was two pound something. I can't remember precisely, but we, we've all got a weight. They even weigh us. Only two pounds? I think I was a bit two pound six or something. I was going to say, you were both very underweight then. Well, well, that's normal for a baby, I think. Two pounds. Two pounds is quite small. Six pounds is big, I think, for a baby. Mm. Yeah, maybe, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah I'm going to have to mum it up. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, if you're, okay, both, if you're both two pounds... What I'm trying, trying to say is, like can you imagine, you know, for centuries now, right, every time a child's born, right, they want to know how much weight... They oh, write, yeah, yeah. They write all this information down. Right? Yeah. They, they write it down behind your back as well, do you know that? Yeah. But that's what happens when you register, when you get registered, and a lot of people have become aware of this today. A lot of people have become a lot more knowledgeable of this fact today. When you get registered, yeah, as a child, yeah, when you get born in the country that you live in, especially here in the UK, when you have children, after the child is born, you have two weeks. We have a, a, a time frame where you have to register your child, two week window. Where you have to go to wherever it is in your local community, whether it or be, you'll get fined. or you'll get fined if you if you don't do it within those two weeks time, yeah. And when they register you, you become a corporation. Essentially, that's what happens. Yeah, they. That's why you're registered in capital letters. You can even research it and look it up. The reason they register you in capital letters is because that's how it's written out as a, when you when you're writing out an official thing for a corporation. And what happens is that. All we, every time someone gets registered and they get registered, basically they become a corporation and they go onto the stock. They go into like a stock market, like a stock bond, essentially, where it's floated on. It's you know it's on the stock floated on the stock market, essentially. Um, so these people make huge amounts of money off of people's information and everything else. Why do you think today, right? There's so many apps that are available today that are free. Because not only, well, they make money, obviously, through marketing as well. But a large amount of the money that they make comes through data information, which is sold on to third third party companies and corporations so that they can market shit to you, sell sell you products and then market things based on your interests and your likes and etc. If you see what I mean. Um, So, yeah. your favourite moment, you know, what do you enjoy doing most with your time, that's what I'm asking, question time, question time, question time, dun dun dun, um, I think it's a multifaceted answer to be very honest with you, um, I enjoy, I, I enjoy, well, all, all those things, I enjoy, 
multi, lots of things, mate. I enjoy spending time with my kids. I enjoy spending time with my wife. I enjoy spending time doing music. I enjoy spending time on my own sometimes, just chilling out. I sometimes, like, like you said, like you just said, like, like basically, you just I enjoy, enjoy every moment. Basically, like I enjoyed most things, you know. I, I try to take play even with work. I try to make sure when I'm at work, I'm still having a good day and still. Even though I'm quite busy and getting on with what I've got to do for 12 hours, it's quite a long day. I just get on with it and make the most of it and try to have a bit of fun with your colleagues and, you know, a bit of light-hearted conversation here and there, a bit of a laugh here and there and just try to make try to make the most of it, you know? You know, there's lots of things in life that we don't want to do, but most of the time we have to do them. So you kind of just, it's better to do it with a smile on your face, you know? You know? Get my favourite you. time is when I'm waking up in the morning because I think, oh, good, I'm still alive. Yeah, another day. You know, and yeah, um, give thanks. I think, like, you know, every day is another step, isn't it? And you kind of go, you must have learned something from one day, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they're kind of like, slowly getting wiser, mm. I think, you know. So in time, we are, you know, that's a lot to look forward to, really, every day, I think. Mm. You know, you get wiser every day. Yeah. Sort of That's what I feel like, really. It's kind of like my birthday every moment. Yeah. You know, kind of way, you know, they're getting better. Mm. Um, but, you know, I mean, we all have our ups and downs. Yeah. I'm not happy, happy every every second of the day. Do you know what I mean? Like, sometimes when it's raining, I think, oh, I like that. Do you know what I mean? And I might do the wash up instead. And, yeah. You know, and do other things that. Like, so we have all got things that we don't really enjoy doing in life. Yeah. And there's things that have got to be done every day, isn't there? Like you say, like getting your sleep in, very important. And having a bath each day really, yeah. Yeah. Having something to eat. And if you don't do these things you will we'll pay for it. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Some way or another. Mm. You know, if you do the wrong thing, you know, in a kind of way, if you drink too much one night, you pay for it the next day, do you know what I mean? You know, so anything you do wrong I feel, in a kind of way, or so if you're watching telly all night and you're watching a film and you think, oh, I need to go to sleep, yeah. I've got to get up early for work tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but you're watching this film, you know, you're you know you're punishing yourself really at the end of the day because you you know the next day you wake up and you're tired all day because you watched the movie. You know, you made the wrong choice. Like we were talking about last week, choices. You know. You know, it's all to do with time a bit as well, isn't it? You know, yeah. like making the right choices to enjoy your time. Mm. Yeah, being sens sensible. I mean, tomorrow I, I know that I'm going to probably make a mistake here and there, but I don't. It don't bother me you mm. know, because I just get up. Yeah, and keep get it, on. Keep it know, moving. So mm. keep going. You know, solve that problem. Yeah. And move on. Yeah. So I mean, I think like each day is a problem. Like even if you want to go for a walk, it's a problem to get somewhere. Sometimes, especially if it's uphill, you know what I mean. You know, you're you're struggling, your muscles are hurting. You know what I mean. You know, you know before you you go for the walk, it's gonna hurt you. You know, mm. like you know that at the end of the day, if you do it, you're gonna sleep better. Mm. You know, because you've had an exercise in a kind of way. Mm. And even exercise each day is important. You know, so you've got to do all these things in one day. To look after yourself. And keep up with it, you know, yeah. like, you know, I mean, I live on my own, you know, your time is different to mine a little bit, because I'm a, a single man, where you all are, um, and so I, I feel like my time's a little bit more, um, peaceful, more peaceful, that's for sure, you know, I've got no one to talk to, Yeah. like you have, mm -hmm. you know, or I'm not sharing my life. I've done that in the past, you know, and I can remember those times, mm. you sort of mean, you know, and, you know, I sort of, I feel like I, um, I don't want to go back to those times, having a relationship in a kind of way, you know, because I, uh, I know the difficulties of it all, in a kind of way, you know, and I'm, I feel a lot happier just being on my own today, you sort of mean, yeah, yeah, and spending my time mm. completely on my own, you know, so nobody gets in the way of my time, mm. really, yeah, or... If people do get in the way of my time, it's probably because I chose to do it. You know, it's like you. You know, you. I come. You, I see you twice a week, and I, and 
that I choose to spend my time with somebody who I enjoy spending my time with. Yeah, exactly. Just like you do. Mm. You know, it's really important that whoever's around you, that those people are, you know, like, you know that I'm not going to let you down. Mm. Yeah. You know, and it's really important to know that you've got friends around that, around you, that, or family, Well, people sometimes will let you down in life, and yeah, sometimes do, you've got to do. understand that. Yeah. You've got to understand you've got to be understanding and forgiving. But like you said, generally speaking, like like even like, like me and you being like brothers, like being good, be 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 good, very good friends. But we kind of more like brothers and friends. We feel like we're people that can kind of break up. We're more like brothers than friends at this point. You know, what I mean, after all the after ten years, you know, so. Um, and we work together in a kind of way. Isn't exactly. It? You know, we've got multiple things going on together as you know, outside of our friendship, you know. Um, but yeah, I think that is something that has to be that sh- you know, people need to value and cherish in life, you know. Um, I know that I can rely on you and I hope and feel like you can rely on me too, like, you know, it's mm-hmm. like it's it's a good feeling, isn't it's it? It's having and not but not only for that reason, but just being like being able to be honest with some, like, you know, just having honesty as brothers between each other and being able to help each other and advise each other or to, you know, just, you know, just, just be there for each other yeah. for whatever, you know, just it's... Having two good people together mm. makes those two good pe- um, people stronger. Yeah, yeah. A lot of bad friends that I thought they were my friends, okay. Yeah. But then I realised they weren't because mm. of me, you know, and I'm glad that I... Yeah. You know, I don't want to ever see them again either, do you know what I mean? Mm. I've had my day, you know, they've had their chances, do you know what I mean, whatever. Yeah. And so, like, like you said, some people do kind of um, upset your life. Um, and you got to forgive them. Yeah. Somehow, you know, like my wife, you know, I loved her, but mm. she ended up not wanting me, and it kind of, like, hurt me, you know. Like, I trusted her, do you know what I mean, to go forward with me, but it wouldn't be. And I was angry that she let me down. But what's the point? You know, you only live once. You know, and it's you know you're not going to fix it. So you you know you might as well forget about it and get on. If you sort of mean, and you know, carry on. Let's put that way. Yeah. Well. Pick up the pieces and yeah. Pick yeah, up the pieces. It's just and no worth. It's not yeah. worth living down below. If you sort of mean, and being depressed about it all the time when you're never ever going to get it back. Yeah. Or, true. So I found it very difficult to forgive my wife, mm. whatever, because I lost a heck of a lot, whatever. But it's the best thing I've ever done, you know. Mm. I'm, I'm glad today I look back and I think I'm glad that she did it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because my life was a lot better than it was. Yeah. I mean, it was hard work taking the women on, you mm. know. And it's kind of like when I first met my, my wife, she was only 19. And she was living with her dad and mum. Yeah, and her mum and dad was doing everything, do you know what I mean? And getting her, buying her food, and, you know. And then I got older with her, and then we got a house together, and then I was going to work paying for her. You know, I took over her father and mother's job, basically, in a funny way, you know. And, and you don't realise you're doing that, but you are. You, you, you're, you're taking a child off them. Uh, not a child so much, but, um, you know, she's 19 now, whatever, but she's... You know, you, when you're 16, you're still a child, you know, really, in a kind of way, you know. But there I am, sort of taking on 